My apologies for those of you that are expecting team-by-team -team previews for the 2024 NFL seasons. Not happening this year. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. Frankly, I don't have uh, the passion for it. <laughs> so I'm kind of splitting the difference here. I'll do it by division this year. So that way I can at least get something on the record over the next couple of days. But yeah, like too much going on with work, school, life, just everything like that, right? So we are here though. And of course, we're going to start off. It should make sense at this point with where my loyalties lie the most. And that is with the NFC North. And I'm going to kick off talking about a team whose fan base right now is probably thinking about that song suicide is easy i kid i kid school <laughs> the fan base right now that feels like they got bent over and took it up the <laughs> no more kirk cousins boy oh boy you got that next era didn't you but also no J.J. McCarthy in 2024. Like the one thing you had to hold on to for hope. The one thing you could point to and say like, that's the thing to watch over the season. Let's hope he's not Christian Ponder. Let's hope he's not Teddy Bridgewater. Let's hope he can actually show that he's a guy. At least he's going to show you in 2024 his, his abilities to recover from injury and hold the clipboard on the sideline. <laughs> Which really sucks if you're Vikings fans because you've got Justin Jefferson, who's a special player, who was certainly early on in his career on a first ballot Hall of Fame trajectory. I don't think there's any argument really there. Um, and then last year's first round pick, Jordan Addison, is another nice piece in that passing game. And you've got TJ Hawkinson. Like, this is an offense with some talent on it in the passing game, right? And then you look at that offensive line, it's pretty good. Um, actually, I think really good. This is an offense that has some pieces, so it wasn't the worst situation to come to for a J.J. McCarthy, especially being able to play under a coach like Kevin O'Connell. Problem is, he's not there. So now you got Sam Darnold. Dun, 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 dun. And when you look at this Vikings team, I, I can't understand for the life of me why so many Vikings fans See that at least I see on social media, so this could be misleading, and it probably certainly is. But there's a lot of them that really praise Brian Flores because he blitzes a ton. Yeah, but his defense still stunk. They were suspect as hell and just crappy last year, and they still look suspect this year, especially in the front seven. And oh, by the way, no Daniel Hunter with his 15, 16 sacks. How do you think that's going to work out? You know, when you look at this division. There's probably going to be a lot of variance between how folks rank the Lions, the Packers, and the Bears in terms of 1, 2, 3 in this division. But I'd be really stunned, even for a lot of loyal like Vikings fans, if most everyone didn't have this team coming up at the bottom of this division. And why wouldn't you at this point? Their defense stinks. They've got what should be the worst quarterback in the division. Yeah, this feels like a five-win team to me all the way. Uh, and then we go to the Green Bay Packers, Brown Bay. Ugh, they got some homely-looking women up in Green Bay. Some fat, ugly house. Oof, oof. You go to cow tip and you get confused whether you're talking about her or the moo moo in the field. Which moo moo could you do? Oof. Don't drink the water in Brown Bay. And yeah, the women. They are some homely heifers, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but what they do have there in Brown Bay is a new exciting quarterback and yet the same old played out playoff choke job against the 49ers. That's what they got last year. But if you're a Packers fan in the organization, you should certainly feel a lot of reason to be positive because you feel like you found out Jordan Love is the guy. And by God, by how much they just paid him for that massive contract extension, they better hope he holds for him. They better hope he is. But that's a guy who threw for over 4,000 yards last year, 30-plus touchdowns. Um, yeah, like the fucking Packers have done it again from, from what it looks like. How crazy is that? Now on that offense around Jordan Love, outer Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon due to his injury, Jones going elsewhere. In our Josh Jacobs and Marshawn Lloyd in that backfield. You've got a young receiving core with some you know, nice talent there, right? When you talk about Jaden Reed 
and you talk about Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson, Dante Wicks, but who is that Luke Musgrave, if you want to go to tight end, but who is the guy to go to? Who is that dude when the chips are down? Like maybe it's more realistically Jaden Reed, and is he that level of receiver? Who knows, right? This feels like a team that's screaming out for a true number one wide receiver, and at times that could be a negative for them with their passing game. I think they're solid in the trenches on both sides of the ball. To me, the big question with the Packers is around their defensive level of play. Like, can they play up to the significant draft investment placed in that unit? Like, this is not a team that's just invested a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. It is first-round picks galore. And at some point in time, you can't just be satisfied with a 10 to 15 level defense. The amount that they have invested there from a draft pick standpoint and subsequently a salary cap standpoint indicates that this should be an elite unit. And if it's not, something has really gone wrong, either from a coaching or a talent evaluation standpoint. Just saying. Uh, when I look at the Packers, you know, they were just a little bit above middle of the road last year. They obviously made the playoffs, made a little bit of a run. I, I can see them doing that again this year. I just don't know that they got markedly better. Uh, Love will have another year of play under his belt, so that probably helps. But I think this is a Packers team that didn't make much movement down at all. No, no, no. But I, I don't see that they made a ton of movement up. So I think they could hover around 9-8 and eight this year. And then we get to the Bears. And Bears fans are tired of a Bears football. And they're ready to bear down, bitches. They said enough talk about that team in Brown Bay with the homely heifers. Let's go to the monsters of the midway. Um, let's do that. The Caleb Williams era has officially begun. And for a number of Bears fans, that Caleb Williams watch had been underway for months. And now we're just a few short days away from seeing Caleb Williams make his regular season debut for the Bears against the Tennessee Titans. What an exciting time it is. New quarterback, new hope, hopefully a new era in Chicago Bears history. When I look at this team, I talked about it in my Bears preview video. Yes, I'm a Bears fan, so the Bears get their own preview video. Fuck everybody else. Uh, this is arguably the best set of skill players that they've had in organizational history. When you look at all around, from wide receiver, tight end, running back, and then the depth and level of depth of talent there. Like, it's a real strength for them. Their defense has some building blocks and Montez Sweat and Jalen Johnson. Um, even if, especially in Jalen's case, he certainly feels a bit underrated. Like, not even in the NFL Top 100. Like, it's kind of a who cares thing, but it's also a come the fuck on kind of thing, right? Really? He's not a Top 100 player? Oof. Um, the back seven of the Bears' defense should be really good. The question to me is, how well will the trenches hold up on both sides of the ball? Offensively, at tackle, I think they're solid. Not spectacular, but solid. Um, you'd like it to be spectacular there, but they're solid with Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright. To me, the question is the interior of the line. Nate Davis sucks. What are they going to get out of Colden Shelton and or Ryan Bates at center? Tevin Jenkins, how many games are you going to get out of him? That's always the thing. He's a good player, but if you can't count on him to be there for more than 9, 10, 11 games, like what fucking good is he really? And then defensively, sure, you've got Montez Sweat coming off the edge. Andrew Billings is really good against the run. But major questions to me with Javon Dexter and Zach Pickens on the interior of that line. And then who's going to be that second edge rusher? Feels really ambitious to say that Austin Booker is going to have a Mark Anderson type of rookie season. But that's got to be the hope, right? Because DeMarcus Walker sure isn't going to have a big season there. Maybe a Daniel Hardy can come in and give us... You get what I'm saying, though. Like, that's a real opportunity. You could say, well, that's what they added. They traded for Taylor, but... You know, Taylor was so great. Would he have been available on the trade market? Let's just be realistic there, right? So I think the trenches are going to be a th the thing to watch with this team outside of Kate Williams, obviously, because that's the most important thing this year. And it all comes down to how will he adjust to the NFL? Will he have the big rookie season he should? Look, C.J. Stroud threw for over 4,000 yards last year. There's no reason with the supporting cast that Caleb Williams has on offense that he shouldn't do the same damn thing. Will Shane Waldron's offensive philosophy allow him to do so? Will Caleb Williams execute well enough, consistently enough, from structure to enable him to do it? Will the Bears be able to move consistently offensively? Or are they going to be a kind of up-and-down yo-yo offense that lives and dies by the big play? 
With that said, the Bears certainly are improved. They're a team that won seven games last year. It's hard to not see additional improvement there. They've upgraded at quarterback. They've upgraded at the offensive skill positions. They've added some additional talent on the defensive side of the ball. This feels like an 11-win team. It really does to me. Probably a year away from really being ready for prime time, but you know their trajectory should be very similar to the Houston Texans of last year. And if it's not, something's went wrong with the Bears. But I think still the team to beat in this division is going to be the Detroit Lions. They're defending champs in the division. They were really close to a Super Bowl berth until they pissed it away in the second half, and in particular the third quarter of that NFC Championship game against the 49ers. They got an offense spearheaded by that Thunder and Lightning backfield with David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. Then in the passing game, Jared Goff has a stud in Amon Ross St. Brown and another stud in Sam Laporta that he can throw to. I think that offensive line is the best in the division by a bit. And, you know, it really comes down to a couple of things for them. One is, how much improvement do they get from their defense? You do get another year of experience for Aiden Hutchinson, Jack Campbell, Brian Branch. They've added Terry and Arnold into that secondary, so he should be an upgrade there. But that's one player, not the seven or eight that they needed, probably, right? Um, their defense is what cost them last year. Is their defense improved enough to where they can be real deal legit? Can they bang and potentially overtake the 49ers in the playoffs? That's what it's going to come down to. Now, to me, they've got the best coach in the division from a motivation standpoint, a leadership standpoint, and Dan Campbell. That does carry some weight. It certainly fucking matters. He's a guy that's built a culture there that you have no choice but to respect, in my opinion. But then I come back to, man, Jared Goff is also their quarterback. And when you think about the stretch of the regular season and in certain matches, perhaps in the playoffs, he could put up decent numbers, yes, with some of the talent he has around him, certainly. But in that big spot, is Jared Goff the type of guy that is capable of putting a team on his back and delivering them to the promised land? I'm sorry. I'm just still a little hesitant about that. So I think it's a thing of regular season, Lions should be largely good unless their defense totally face plants or they have some really significant injuries on the offense. I expect them to win this division, win like 12 games, but for them, like, that should be a formality of you need to get to the playoffs. And once you do, can that defense show up when it matters? Can Jared Goff be that level of dude when it matters? And those are two real serious questions for them this year. So feel free to tell me how you've got the NFC North shaken out, um, Vikings fans. <laughs> it's going to be a long 17-game season for them. I feel sorry. No, I don't. I don't feel sorry for them one bit. When the Bears are down, they don't feel sorry. So fuck them. Fuck them homely heifers in Brown Bay. I don't know why them Packers fans would want them. Oof, ugly bitches. Anyways, the Lions better watch out because the Bears are coming, damn it.